High Adventure. Tonight's story by Ron Evans is entitled Drums Along the River. At this moment, a great road is being laid through the dense Brazilian jungle in an attempt to open up this vast territory for settlers. Before this could be done, several aerial surveys had to be made, since many hundreds of miles of road were to be laid where no civilized human had been before. My name is Ken Driver, and I'm a geologist, working for International Mineral Exportation Company in Brazil. A female colleague, Sue Nolan, and I had been invited by Art Munro, an American surveyor, to visit a small jungle outpost near the Colombian border for a few days. The small outpost was accessible only from the air, and the three of us set off from a small town on the banks of the Amazon in a plane piloted by Rico Gomsch, one of the few men who was familiar with the area and the Indian tongues. The river looks so beautiful from up here, inviting. An invitation to death, Miss Nolan. Oh, it's so hard to believe. <laughs> that river is full of piranhas, and on the banks you'll find anacondas big enough to swallow a man. And not only that, Mr. Munro. There are the Indios with their poison darts. It's half your country. Head eh, hunters. Glad I'm up here. I hope it's not like that at the camp you're taking us to. Oh, the camp Orono is, is all right. So long as you don't try to bathe in the river. It's been cut out of the river bank and is stockaded government has a small detachment of soldiers stationed there. No danger, so long as you follow the rules. Well, what time will we get there, Rika? About an hour, uh, say, uh, just about ten. I'm beginning to wonder whether it wouldn't have been better to have spent my two weeks leave in Rio. By now, I'd be lying on Copacabana Beach, soaking up the sun. You told me you were the adventurous type of girl. I am, so long as I'm surrounded by the comforts of home. You mean like TV, restaurants, and ice cream? <laughs> you got the idea. <laughs> you won't find anything like that at Borono, Miss Nolan. I think you will find it interesting in many other ways. Uh, Rico, what's wrong? You are a blockage, I think. Oh, heavens, no. To do something, Rico. Oh, please, miss, I, I'm, I'm doing all I can. We're, we're loose. We're going to crash. Relax, Sue. Rico's doing his best. There, there's nothing else I can do except crash land. The river. The river. You, you, you can do a belly flop in it. Maybe we'll that be able... way we'll end up as food for the piranha. I'll have to use the trees to soften the landing. Please fasten your belts. Oh, what an unholy mess. Can't you send out a distress No girl? time. Hold tight! The plane hit the tops of the trees, spun and tore its way through to the lower branches, coming to rest a few feet above the ground, cradled between two huge trees. Rico had made a magnificent job of it, and apart from a few bruises and scratches, none of us was hurt. Are you okay, Sue? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, I'm okay, too. Rico? Oh, just a small cut on my arm. No, Mr. Munro, don't, don't move around. As you can see, we're balancing between two trees. My golly, you're right. It's a miracle. Oh, brilliant landing, Rico. We must get away from the plane quickly before the Indians come. This is an automatic my day call, but I doubt it will help much. We must get to the river and follow it westwards and pray the Indians don't come after us. How are we going to get out of the plane without disturbing the balance? One at a time, very carefully. There's some rope in the back. You can go down first, Mr. Munro, and then Mr. Driver, and I will lower down Miss Nolan. Oh, I used to be good climbing up and down ropes at school. Here's the rope. I'll just force open this door. Oh, come on, darn you! Yeah, that's it. Do you hear that? What? Yes, it's a drum. That's why I'm sorry. The Indians have seen our landing. Climbed out of the plane without any trouble. Down on the ground it was damp, and our feet sank deeply into the decaying vegetable matter. Above our heads, the tall trees completely blotted out the sky, and it was as though we were standing in the nave of a vast, darkened cathedral. Rico led the way towards the river. It was hard going. Oh, oh, I must rest a minute. Get my breath back. Oh, Dad, please, Miss Nolan, force yourself. Oh. 
I can't. I, I, I'm out of condition. Oh, come on, Federico. I mean, it won't make any difference. I'm being watched right now. I'm sure of it. Hey, listen to those drums. They're much closer than before. Well, I can't see anyone. You won't see me. Then there's a mass of gum flash. Where those bird calls? No. It's not genuine. But others, the Indians calling to each other. Yeah. Uh, what the heck? What, what's wrong? Well, something stuck into my arm. Yeah. Look at that. It's like a, a super splinter. Let me see. Dark. A blowpipe. No, no, no. Gee, it, it's beginning to hurt. Shh. You hear that? Yes. A voice from over there. It's in the official language. An order not to kill any more of us. <laughs> what does he mean by that? None of us is dead yet? Mr. Monroe, the doctor's poisoned. Oh, no. He, you yes. mean that I... Here's my knife. Uh, Come on. Maybe we can cut out the poison. It's too light. Uh, Help him sit down. You mean uh, there's nothing... Uh, nothing you can do? Oh, Oh, my, my neck is oh, it, gone. Please, uh, please, there must be something. <laughs> Art? Yes, let me look at him. He's gone. Ken! Ken, what are we going to do? Nothing. Look around us. We blinked through the jungle gloom and saw we were completely surrounded by semi-naked tribesmen, some carrying small bows and others holding six-foot-long blowpipes. We were unarmed, helpless. With agonizing slowness, they closed in on us. One, who was wearing a tall headdress of mud and feathers, obviously the leader, was addressed by Rico. What? Wasame Melulu. What did he say? I asked him what he wanted of us. He, he said he won't be hurt. We don't try to run away. He's telling us to follow. Let's go, then. Where there's light, there's hope. You all right, Sue? Do we have to leave poor Art lying there? Have we a choice? Come on, lass. Whatever happens to Art now, he won't feed it. As we moved off, I was glad Sue didn't look back to where two of the Indians had started to remove Art's head. Rico had been right. We were prisoners of a tribe of headhunters. We walked for what seemed like miles... In the distance, I could hear the river, and soon we came into a clearing filled with rush huts. A large crowd of women, old men and children, were already assembled for our arrival. They poked and pulled at us as though we were strange new creatures, which we were to them. However, on the chief's orders, the escort formed a ring around us and kept them at bay. What are they waiting for? You can speak their language. Doesn't it give a clue as to what they have in mind? Dialect like is difficult to follow because they speak more quickly than the other options I've run into. Uh, something about a priest. A priest? Yes, a priest of some god. Uh, no, 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 not a god. I heard the word shamasa, which means doctor. But it was prefixed by ma, which means god. So? So it means god doctor. So they're waiting for the priest to the god doctor. Will his arrival do us any good? That's what interests me most. I don't think so, Miss Nolan. No white man who has come into this area has lived to return. There have been many, believe me. Missionaries, explorers, traders. who have never been heard of again. But this is the 20th century. Things like this don't happen anymore. Look around you and see the answer. It does. Oh, when I think of Copacabana Beach... Look over there. Something's happening. It's a man. A European, too. Oh, thank heavens for that. Wait. No, he's, he's not a European. A vestigio. A half -caste. But he must come from some trading post. See, he's wearing trousers and a shirt. Yes. And a large feathered headdress. You see how they bow to him? This man must be the priest they were chattering about. He's coming towards us. The Indians are making a passage for him. Vima Melulu. It's better we speak in English. <laughs> stared at the Mizizu, and the crowd became hushed. Where are you from? Well, I'm English. Miss Nolan here is American. I am Brazilian. My name is Zambala. 
Or rather, that is the name I have adopted. Many years ago, I lived in Manaus. I was called Carlo then. Uh, we, we're very pleased to see you here, uh, Zambala. Perhaps not. We shall see. I am the servant of El Medico. For a long time, he has waited for an English, an American, to come by. We are lucky to die. Both at once. El Medico will be very pleased. Who is El Medico? We'll meet him very soon now. We will go to his place. You, you, little fat man. What is your name? Uh, Rico Gomes. I, I am a pilot for Astra. I don't care about that. The less I know of your history, the happier I am. As El Medico has no wish to talk with you, there is no further need for you to wait. You, you mean I, I can go? Certainly. The Indios will help you. No, 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 not that. Let me go. Oh, Rico, they're killing him. Who? Keep back. Oh, oh, how awful. Look away, Sue. You, Zambala, why? El Medico does not wish to talk to Brazilians. We can catch them any time. For heaven's sake, man, stop them from sticking those spears into him. He's dead now. Lashima. Consider yourselves lucky you are American, English. Your nationalities have given you a little longer to live. A little longer? You mean you, you're going to kill us too? All strangers who come here must die. But you are privileged to live a few extra hours for the sake of my master, who cribes your company. Come, we must go to him now. <laughs> Our hearts were so heavy with dread that we barely noticed the route we walked. Still surrounded by our escort of Indian guards, we passed through the village and back into the jungle, Zambala leading the way. Soon the ground began to slope upwards, and the path ended at the entrance to a wide cave mouth. Fixed to the rock outside were innumerable crude wooden figures and symbols, whilst across the entrance itself was a line of five-foot poles a yard part, and topping each one was a grinning human skull. Oh, what a hideous place. It is the home of El Medico. The outside is very misleading and meant only to satisfy the superstitions of the Indios. Look, you see the why they stare. They would rather die than pass this line of skulls. Is this where we get to meet your boss? Yes, but first a word of warning. Huh? Be polite and flattering to El Medico. He will only order your deaths when he tires of your company. Charming. Sounds like a real nice fellow. He is. I've been with him for many years now. Come, let us go inside. Zambala was right. The outside was very misleading. The cavern was really a tunnel which led 50 yards under the hill to the other side. Built against this far entrance was a timber house. Not very big, but substantial. Zambala opened the door and gestured us inside. I gazed around in open amazement. It was a lounge, nicely if primitively furnished. What surprised me most was that two of the walls were completely lined with fully stocked bookshelves. Please make yourselves comfortable. My master will come soon. Don't try to run away, though. The Indians are waiting at the tunnel entrance for you to try. Well, what do you know about that? This... A medical fellow must be a, a European. Yeah, with a highly sophisticated taste, judging by his literature. Most of it's in German, but there's also Shakespeare here and Spencer. Never mind that, Ken. We've got to do something about getting away from this nut, whoever he is. Ah, I'm very pleased to meet you. Zambala just told me about you. May I inquire your names? I'm Kenneth Driver, and this is Susan Nolan. Very good. Miss Nolan is American, I presume. Yes. I'm known here as El Medico. But my real name is Heinrich Steiger. Welcome to my humble home. As you can see, I've tried to make it as comfortable as possible. Steiger was an old man, 70 if a day. He was dressed smartly in white, clean and sprightly. A man very much out of place in this green wilderness. He smiled at us, but his thin lips were cruel and needed but a slight change of expression to change the smile into a snarl. Please sit down. Zambale is bringing us some drinks. Then I trust you'll join me in the light lunch. That's very kind of you, but hadn't you better explain to us what all this is about? Yes. Why did the Indians murder Art and Rico? This man, Art, you call him, he was killed in error. 
As for Zaza, he was only a Brazilian. I didn't need him. Look, are we your guests or prisoners? Both. But why? I can't understand your motive. First, tell me about what is happening in the outside world. I get very little news here, you know. Zambala has been my only contact with civilization for many years. Tell me about Europe and America, the political climate, all the scandals, troubles. Are the Russians still aggressive? Steiger pressed Sue and me with questions for over an hour. Then Zambala, who was now playing his part of the butler, announced lunch. We went into a dining room and were served an excellent meal. That our host was quite mad became obvious. Not a raving lunatic, but it could be read in his eyes, in his jerky movements, in his neurotic manner. There came a lull in the conversation while he digested some of the facts Sue and I had told him. That was a nice meal, Mr. Steiger. Uh, Dr. Steiger, Miss Nolan. Oh, of course. Hence your local title of El Medico. I treat the natives for their the aches, pains, and diseases. In return, they think I'm a god and give me their absolute loyalty and protection. Zambala is my high priest and mediator. It was the way I taught him to speak your language. It does it well, don't you think? Uh, tell me, if you will, what you are planning to do with us. Have you killed? But later, no hurry. But why? I could wring your scraggy little neck. That would be a foolish thing to do. The Indians would spend a week killing you both. Very, very slowly. At least, when you die by my hand, it will be quick. I promise you that. But this is sheer madness. Why can't you just let us go? Yes, Sue's right. We could get a canoe from the Indians and paddle up river. I cannot permit you to leave here alive. Don't you recognize me? Or my name? Does Heinrich Steiger mean nothing to you at all? Nothing at all. Should it? Oh, has it been so long that I'm now a forgotten man? You're a wanted man. Is that it? You're wanted by the police. I shall tell you. But first, let us have a drink. Zambala, bring us all another drink. The time is before, Senorita Nolan. Please. Your driver. Yes, the same, please. So, the world has forgotten Heinrich Steiger. That is good. What did you do? I was the doctor in charge of the experimental unit in Rosmank concentration camp. A war criminal? Yes. That is what they called me. But they exaggerated by saying I killed 10,000 prisoners. It was not so. 8,000 would have been more accurate. You murdered 8,000 people. It was my job. War is war. These people were the enemies of the Reich. It's monstrous. Put down the drinks, Ambala. Then go and wait at the cave entrance. I see. There's nothing else you want? Nothing. To continue. First, the British, Russians, French, and Americans hunted me down. When they gave up, I heard that the Jews tried to take up the search. All these years I've lived here, safe. It was hard at first, but I soon became accustomed to the isolation. Now you see why I dare not let you go. If the authorities know that a white man lives here alone, they will suddenly get very nosy. What can they do now? The war finished 29 years ago. Revenge for my so-called crimes. I'm an old man, but I have no wish to die yet. But there was an amnesty. You're a free man. There's no need to hide out here anymore. An amnesty, you say? You mean I'm not wanted now? I didn't know about that, Ken. You should read your papers, Sue. Yes, three years ago. What was it for? It was decided no longer to charge war criminals. If this is true, then, then there's I... no point in killing us. No! Don't drink that! What? What's wrong? Don't touch your drink either, Mr. Driver. They're both poisoned. You were going to kill us. Now. Yes. But as you can see, circumstances have changed. I want to go back to civilization. Just to see what it is like. Zambala can guide us. It is five days march from here to an old Indian trail. Zambala knows it well. We come out of the jungle at a small Colombian town and that You're not going to kill us now? No. We're all going together. We are friends. The sudden change in Steiger's manner astonished us. It was painfully obvious that he'd longed to be able to leave his jungle retreat. We don't know what he told Zambala, but the next morning we left the cave and started the long march westwards into Colombia. It was an arduous journey, through alternating rocky and dense jungle terrain. 
As we drew closer, Steiger's excitement grew until he was like a small boy at a picnic. On the morning of the fifth day, we stopped on the brow of a hill. Ahead of us was a wide path. Zambada pointed to it. There is a road. It leads into Contapa. We can reach the town by noon. So, you have done well, Zabala. Do you want me to go back to the tribe or stay here until you return? Zambala, I have decided not to go back to the tribe. Huh? I'm going to rejoin my own people. I have no further use for you. Steiger was the only one of us armed, and he pulled out his revolver. You are going to kill me? After I have served you for so oh, long? Steiger, don't! You two keep away. This is my business. Why did you do that, Steiger? Why not? There's no future for him. It was nothing but a nasty little pickpocket in Manaus before I took him under my wing. Come, let us go. You have no respect for the value of human life, have you? Oh, please do not moralize to me, Miss Nolan. People who have no value should be destroyed. Too many are parasites. But we cannot stand here arguing. Look, Steiger, Zambala's still alive. He is still... As the old man turned to look, I jumped forward and grabbed for the gun. Oh! I managed to wrest it from his grip. He stood back and looked reproachfully at me. I see. So you're going to kill me? No, Steiger. I'm not a killer. Why? Why are you taking out the bullets? All but one. I'm leaving you a choice. Kill yourself or go back to your Indian tribe. I cannot go back. Without Sambal, they will kill me. That's your problem. I'm going into Cantapa with you. Once they know who you really are, you'll be arrested on sight. But the amnesty... What amnesty? I was only telling you that to play for time, and you swallowed it. The world would never forgive your crimes in a million years. You're a dead man, Steiger, and it's up to you how you want to go out. So, so you tricked me. Traded on my need for company. Civilized company. You see that rock over there? Midway between here and the road? I'm going to leave this gun on top of it. Don't try to chase us and use the one bullet. It wouldn't do you any good. Merely ruin your one chance of taking the easy way out. Now stay here, Steiger, until you see me wave. From then on, it's up to you. Come on, Sue. Goodbye, Dr. Steiger. Have a nice trip to hell. <laughs> I let the pistol on the rock, and we walked away down to the road, where I waved my hand to Steiger. Then Sue and I carried on walking. A few minutes later, I looked back and saw the lonely figure standing silhouetted on top of the rock where I had left the revolver. It was all over. The nightmare had ended. <laughs> High Adventure is produced by Anne Freed and directed by Henry Diffenthal. Mm-hmm.